Hello, I'm Richard Larrington of Larrington Trailers and I'm going to take the opportunity to show you our 2022 Harvester trailer and some of the uh, featured aspects of it which uh, make it the product that it is today. Now, we're going to start at the drawbar. We have a 40mm fixed hitch which is welded on, but then underneath the drawbar we have this uh, swing stand. Now, the big thing is that the stand stays on the drawbar. So you just pull a pin out, you swing the stand up. There's a plate here, as you can see from this position, which guides all the swath from a combine underneath it. It lifts up smooth out the way, nothing hits it. You don't have to take it off and put it somewhere else. It's a very simple stand, excellent to use. The drawbar goes into the chassis. You've got a multi-leaf drawbar here which is attached to this uh, section which has four holes in it so you can vary the angle of the drawbar according to tyre size and according to tractor size and tractor hitch size. The chassis here is made from 300mm deep by 100mm wide by 8mm uh, box section. It's 50D grade so it's a high grade material. This is a very very strong chassis but it's also it's similar material to what other people use. But here's the difference. Where the sprung drawbar attaches into the chassis, we put a full depth cross member in here. What I'm concerned about is that when the tractor or the trailer gets stuck and you're pulling sideways, there's a massive amount of pressure on here. So by making this a full section in there, this makes it super strong. We go back to where the body prop is, something we fit a standard on every single trailer. So this body prop is used from the outside. You don't have to lean in, you use it from the outside. So there's your arm, bring it down, bring it up, put it in that position, let your body come down from the tractor cab. The driver can do this all on his own. When he wants to inspect the air tanks or hosing or the axles, it is now safe and it is a requirement that this is done. Here we have the rollover sheet handle which is just simply clipped into place and we have the central rollover sheet tube support if and when needed in windy days and then you've got a handbrake along with your adjustment for the air brakes so you can change from air to hydraulic brakes. One of the advantages of, by the way of having the body prop is the fact that you can then get over here and make sure you've emptied the air tank because when you change from air brakes to hydraulic takes the most important thing is that this air tank is drained and it needs to be done. When we go back, we're there going to look at the suspension and how it's fitted to the chassis. Importantly, we outset the suspension from the chassis. The reason for that is that we need the best clearance possible between the inside of the tyre and the chassis. So now to check, if you take the size of your fist, you've basically got 100 millimetres here on the fist. Take your fist and actually put it between the inside of the tyre and the chassis. And if you can do that, the chances of it getting soil stuck in here is absolutely remote. The important thing is that when you do get soil and stone in there, if this is far too close to the tyre, this will bind up here with soil and actually stops the tyre from wanting to turn, which makes the tractor pull very much harder. So we maintain that that clearance is a fundamental part of our design. And then what you need to do is to take your fist, get it between the two tyres, and what you can then do is make sure you've got enough room between the, 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 the two tyres. Again, you don't get soil binding in here. That's really important. So the suspension is outset. That gives us one of the best stabilities, so we get very little body roll. And you've got the distance clearance you need when you're working in adverse conditions. Remember these trailers and not road trailers. They are field trailers used on a road. It's a different thing. And if when you go now and check with the trailer you have, if you can't put your fist between the inside of the tyre and the chassis, the trailer is fundamentally flawed. So be very careful and make sure you can get your fist in there. Looking underneath the trailer, we have a single tip ram. We've fitted them since 1996. That gives us the uh, a, a more stable tip trailer. And people sometimes ask, well, why is one ram more stable than two? 
Well, that's because you've only got one pump on the tractor, and when the oil flows to two rams, the one with the lightest amount of weight is always going to lift before the other one, which gives you a bit of a twist in the body of the trailer. With a single tip ram, the only thing that can happen is it's going to just lift the body naturally. And of course, because we're vertically in the air, what we're actually doing is tipping with the rear hinges, not opposed to trying at an angle, trying to push the body off the chassis. The other important point is that whatever you tip, the same and equal pressure goes in the opposite direction. So when you're trying to lift 20 tonnes, where we put the ram that divides 10 tons on the front axle, 10 tons on the back axle, and in that way you keep the weight in the strongest area of the chassis, which is where the suspensions are for support. Other people put rams in the forward position, but remember when you lift, that weight goes on the front axle and goes on the back drawbar hitch. So by um, putting it in this position, we're keeping it very stable. Going back to where the light section is, this light section is now built onto the side of the body. So as the body tips, the light section goes away with the body. That's a really important thing because it means this part of the body is always then protecting the light. So as you go into a sugar beet heap or you go into a muck heap or you go into any hopper or grain store, it means that that's, that tilts up and that's protecting all this. But in case you do get this involved, we put this very hard... Um, and strong light guard at the back of the lights. If you have a quick close-up to that, you can see that there is a lot of protection added in this area. Fundamentally though, when you look at a number of other people, they bring the light guard very, very close to the light. So anything that's long and can protrude would go through there and could break the light. In our way, we leave a massive distance between the guard and the lights, and therefore the chance of getting something to hit the lights is very rare. But one of our principles is this, road usage is very important and be able to see lights. So we give you the ability to get your hand in, clean those lights, get your hand out, so there's no excuse not to maintain good lights at all times. On the rear side of the light frame, we put a shield. This is a steel shield and this protects any of the cables which are on the outside, so we don't get any stones coming off the wheels and tyres damaging the cables. It's always clean inside there for anything that needs to happen. We're now going to come round to the tail door. This hydraulic tail door has a slotted hinge, so it actually goes up before it opens, and when it comes back down, it comes back down to the body and slides down and then hooks in here. If you have a look down the side of the tail door here, you'll see there's a rubber seal which is based all the way around the trailer and this seal makes sure that there is nothing that's going to ever leak out of this trailer as regard to grains, etc. Here the hooking system is not welded in place, we bolt it in place and we give you the ability to adjust it. So in case there is any movement, you can put that exactly where you need it to put. That's engineered, not just welded. On the rear of the tail door, you've got your grain chute and handle, which can position on the right side or the left side, as in this case. And you've got a screw here so that you can put it at whatever height you need it to be at. Fundamentally, when you come back and look at the tail door, important points are the lighting system, which we put in the top right and top left corner. We were the first manufacturer to fit the lighting system uh, so that people six cars back can actually see which way you're going to turn. And by doing this, it has massively reduced accidents when people are turning right into farmyards. It's a fundamental, most important thing that I believe that every trailer manufacturer should now be fitting is top tail door lights, along with double bottom tail door lights. You've got to make sure those motorists can see where you're at. The harvester body is what we call a half pipe trailer. So when we look about the side of the trailer, we've got this section that folds in and that makes us have a half pipe trailer. So here we have four mil plate and we have six mil plate, which makes us a very tough, strong floor and a strong side. 
But these pieces of plate are made in three sections, the floor, the right, the left sides. We have an eight meter brake press, so that is all then folded in one piece of steel. This is one piece of steel. So when you look at the inside of the trailer, we have no cross welds in this body. This is one piece, so it's really, really smooth. Now the principle of that is this, your money, your product is inside this trailer, not on the outside. And it's always easy to look at the outside of the trailer and go, oh, that looks a nice trailer. But remember, your money's on the inside, okay? So when you discharge potatoes, onions and carrots, the most important thing is you, la you do not want that crop to be skinned by adverse cross welds which split the trailer up. In our case, this is a parallel body. It allows the discharge to be smooth and it will not damage the crop. The half pipe principle is this. When you take a square trailer, when the gravity of that and weight of that pushes down, it always wants to jam in the corners. When you make a half pipe trailer, what then happens is gravity is making it swill itself out. So to discharge a load in this trailer, of grain in particular, you only need to go to probably the top of the second stage of the ram, which is a very, very shallow level for it to discharge. So anybody who's got low buildings, this is the perfect trailer because it will easily come out without having to pull out, tip up, let down, back in, discharge. That's why we make a half pipe body and we give you the choice. Coming to the front of the trailer, here we have the eye. This is the most widest, largest visible eye made today of anybody's trailer. This is a, the one you're looking at has got a 300 mil arch and we do 150, 300 or even 450 for those people with potatoes. And the reason for that is you can stack potatoes up to 400 mil before it falls off the side so we give you a 450 mil arch so you can easily roll a rollover sheet over the top. The rollover sheet is on another video which you can go onto YouTube and have a look and you'll see how that works. It's one of the best ones again. We've done a lot of adjustments to the rollover sheet. It's a really, really good system and you can see it in action. So that gives you some simple and basic fundamental principles of what we've done this year, how we've changed it and why the Harvester is a very popular trailer now. Thank you for watching this. I hope that you're able to uh, take a lot of interest in it. If you want to give us any uh, feedback, please do. We're always very willing to listen to any comments that you might have. But we hope at some time you'll just pick up the phone and say, yes, I want to harvest a trailer and we'll be pleased to take your order. Thank you very much indeed, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.